Hey, this is D from D-Mods Garage. Today we're going to talk about sourcing tools. Generally, you can buy tools new, you can buy really nice expensive stuff, but generally you don't need it. Even if you're doing this for a living, you don't need expensive tools, especially if you're just getting started. Yeah, <laughs> if later on you wish to go buy Snap-on tools, Mac tools, Cornwell, SK, whatever, you can do that. But start by buying cheap tools or inexpensive tools. Pawn shops. That's pawn shops. Not to be fused with other places that sound similar. <laughs> <laughs> um, generally, um, back in the day when I first got into buying tools and stuff, I used to actually take about a Saturday every month and we used to go to different pawn shops and there was a lot of them that would have five gallon buckets of tools that you could buy. Well, we'd sit there and sort through all the buckets and pull out all the SK, all the Snap-on, you know, Craftsman. Crafts <laughs> back in the day, craftsmen, as long as they could literally read the fact that it said craftsmen on it, they would give you a new one. It did not make a difference what you would do with it. I've taken wrenches, bent them with the torch, and then brought them back and went, I, I, I don't know how it happened. I just put a, I put a little pressure on it and it bent. And they went, oh, go get a new one. For free. For free. Or, and actually I used to break craftsmen so often <laughs> that my lovely wife, I had a bucket that I used to keep them all in, and she would go and take the bucket every time she went to the closest craftsman to us, which was not very close, and she would bring the bucket in, and they'd exchange all of them for free. Didn't make a difference that I bought them used, they didn't care. Flea markets, but you need to kind of get an idea of, generally the best place is start looking online, kind of get an idea of what goes for what. This way you know a brand new set of, say, sockets, you know, between such and such size, American Standard or metric, whichever you end up needing, is $26, we'll say. Well, if you go out and you find them for 13 or less, <coughs> and they're not total junk, that's a good deal. Generally, if you go and buy used tools, and they're on a bar, the, the sockets will be one will be every 16th increment, or if they're metric, it's every millimeter. There's a couple that you'll very rarely find, like 18 millimeter, you'll never find on a set. <laughs> you don't usually run across them. Um, there's a couple other weird ones, but for the most part. But if you know that you're going to, um, your first couple of sets, generally, <laughs> you get to the point that you're, bo you're trying to get a, as many as, as possible out of a set. Later on, if you continue to do this, because you'll find that you'll break certain stuff or you need, you know, three or four of them because there are certain sockets that you're always using and you tend to misplace or whatever, you'll end up buying whole sets or buying just those sockets. Um, generally, if you look at the wall on a socket, <laughs> but the thickness of the corner of the corner from where the two points meet, the thinner that is, the easier it is to break. That doesn't always work that way because it has to do with the tempering. The other thing you should look for <laughs> is on sockets, is stuff like that. That's a crack. <laughs> Technically, as long as you don't apply a lot of pressure to this one, it'd be fine. But when you start applying a lot of pressure to it, the, the wall is going to deflect and it's going to skip and it tends to round off the nuts and then you run into a whole bunch of other problems. So the thing is, is you go, oh, well, how do I know that it's too cheap to buy? Generally, if you price your stuff when you start looking and you, you assume that either half of it's junk or all of it's junk, there's different things you can do with it. So like this is a broken no-name socket. Sometimes what you can do is, I always keep these instead of just throwing them in the scrap bin. I'm never going to get this warrantied or anything else. Well, you use them to drive bearings or other things. Sometimes you use them to make other tools or anything else, even a one-time use thing. Well, guess what? That now has value. Sometimes that's the easiest way to go. You don't know 
<laughs> you can't always tell that it's, you know, made in China, so it's either the tempering's too hard or the tempering's too soft, the jaws are going to open up when you put a lot of pressure on it, or if the wrench is going to bend, which I've done with my bare hands, you never know. Just because it says Chinese, well, guess what? Everything's made in China nowadays, so you can't go off of that anymore. Truthfully, brand names. <laughs> but see, here's the other thing. Because, so, Advanced Auto used to sell, Dur I think it was Dura Wrench or something. Well, there was another company that was, it sounded exactly the same. It was totally different. Oh, and guess what? All that warranty stuff that you bought from them, they no longer carry, so they'll no longer warranty it. So, once again, this is a this is a thing where, yes, buying cheap tools or buying used tools sometimes will benefit you. Sometimes you can't get them warrantied. You can, you know, the big names you always will until something happens and they don't. Supposedly, there's a whole big thing where they were talking about, um, and guys have guys have both sets. Um, they got a Harbor Freight, and the Harbor Freight now has what's known as the Icon set, and everyone's held them. And they go, and they held it side by side. The part numbers on them are even the same as Snap-on. Granted, they're expensive, but they're still cheaper than a Snap-on. 